Hello everyone, today's session is about the topic of thermal quantities. So we will be looking into the details of this topic of thermal quantities. So this is Arit Chandar from KP Gate classes and now before we start with this topic of thermal quantities, let us get a brief introduction with respect to this particular topic, which subject it falls under, what is the importance of this subject in gate examination, which section does it fall under from the official syllabus, who all need to study it and what is the average weightage of this topic. So let us look into these points of introduction for this topic of thermal quantities and then we will begin with the lecture. So first and foremost, the topic of thermal quantities comes under the subject of climatology. The subject it comes under is climatology. As far as the subject is considered, as per the official syllabus, climatology is some part of it. Basic part of it comes under basic part of climatology, comes under part A that is common part. So everyone has to study this topic of climatology, the basics of it. Some advanced topics, advanced uh, uh, say uh, topics from the subject of climatology, they come under the architecture part that is part B1. So that is with respect to the official syllabus for the subject of climatology. If I want, if I give you an introduction as to what are those topics in the common part, under part A, the topics covered include the basics of climate, types of climate, climate responsive design. So the theoretical part of climatology, the basics of it, uh, climatic factors, types of climate, climate responsive design, these are included under part A. Under architecture part, however, you will be having the topics like, uh, say for example, solar architecture, which is slightly advanced topic of climatology, or say details of thermal quantities now the topic of thermal quantities also if you look into 2022 so let me tell you about this topic of the as per the official syllabus you can consider thermal quantities as a subject under the architecture part but in gate 2022 there was a numerical on thermal quantities in the common part as well so even thermal quantities some basic questions of it can be asked in the common part as well so it is advisable to consider the subject of climatology completely as a subject of common part itself even solar architecture, even solar, even though solar architecture is mentioned under the part B when that is architecture, question was asked on solar architecture in the common part in gate 2022 question paper. So it is advisable to consider the subject of climatology as a subject of common part itself, but generally questions are asked under the architecture part as well. So that's about the introduction to the subject of climatology. Uh, even if you are leaving or if uh, we uh, suggest everyone to completely learn the uh, full syllabus and then decide which part to attempt during the exam more details about it later but uh, I would suggest to not leave out any subject like climatology for example at least the basics you should be very confident because questions have been asked in the past papers in the common part as well now that's about the subject of climatology coming to thermal quantities uh, uh, if I talk about the historic the performance of this particular topic in the gate examination if you look into 2023 question paper the subject of climatology had a total weightage of four marks of which two marks was from the subject of thermal quantities. So let me mention over here, let me create a table to get an average idea on the weightage of this particular topic. So if I talk about the subject that is climatology, let me write over here the subject of climatology and the thermal quantities. The weightage of this particular topic itself, thermal quantities is an important area. Majority of the questions under climatology, at least one question on thermal quantities is always asked in the paper. If you look into gate 2023 question paper, the weightage of climatology completely was four marks of which two marks was from thermal quantities subject topic itself. From the subject of climatology, thermal quantities 50% marks. So it was asked in the part, common part, uh, in the architecture part, not in the common, but in the architecture part. That question was asked in the architecture part. So in 2022 question paper, the subject of climatology had a huge weightage of eight marks. That was a huge weightage from which thermal quantities had a weightage of three marks. In 2022 question paper, numerical on this was asked in the uh, common part itself one numerical was asked in part a common part as well so from thermal quantities even though the subject is as i told you majority to be considered as a subject of the uh, architecture part the year before it if you see uh, in 2021 the weightage of this particular subject overall climatology was five marks so in 2021 question paper there was no division into common part architecture part and so on so the total weightage was five marks for the subject of climatology of which thermal quantities had a majority weightage of four marks where two numericals were asked in 2022 as well numerical was asked on thermal quantities one numerical was asked on thermal quantities 
uh and there was one theory question as well if i if i'm not wrong as well as 2023 is considered now see many students have this misconception that uh from numerical part if you're if you're learning about some numerical concept like thermal quantities there are a lot of terms we will discuss here under thermal quantities which all are which all come under numerical part but theoretical questions also can be asked from the similar area you will get better understanding moving further i will tell you what type of theoretical questions can be asked from numerical concepts but if i give you an example of 2023 in the 2023 question paper, there was a theory question in the architecture part, which was based on a thermal quantity, thermal diffusivity. Now, it is a topic, it is a term which relates to numerical concept, but questions were asked like thermal quantity, uh, thermal diffusivity is inversely proportional to so and so term, indirectly proportional to so and so term. So, it was asked as a multiple select question. Now, to understand the relation between various quantities, you need to know the formula of it. Now, by hearting the formula is the worst way you can prepare for competitive exams like GATE because direct formula substitution based questions are rarely asked in the examination. Even to answer these conceptual things, the relation directly proportional, inversely proportional, you should not only remember the formula, you should understand the reason behind that particular formula. So that's the way you learn for competitive exams like GATE. So in our concept based approach, we will try to minimize the things which we will by heart. We'll try to go to the basic underlying root of that formula and understand the concept. That way you will be able to answer the numericals and theory questions even if there is some, some sort of twist like it always happens in the GATE examination. So that's an introduction to the subject of climatology in brief with the topic of thermal quantities. In today's session, our focus is not on the complete subject. So the complete subject of climatology itself will take us around say 15 hours or so obviously we were, we're not covering that in today's session we are only focusing on uh, some part of thermal not even complete thermal quantities within thermal quantities there are a lot of terms in today's session we will be discussing four important and basic terms which come under thermal quantities so let me begin with the topic of our focus for today's session so this was a brief intro uh, let me add one last point of introduction also here where can you study this from after this session? Where should you study this topic of thermal quantities? It is included in book 5. So there is a 10 book set which we provide at KP Gate classes which covers the entire syllabus of gate architecture and planning. Book number 5 is, is, in, is the book in which the topic of climatology is included. So you can study this after the session. You can refer to that book where you can study the content, practice the questions in the study material and also the test series. So that's about the uh, source for your further study. So let us now begin with the topic of thermal quantities. So. As I told you, in today's session, we will be covering four basic thermal quantities. Number one, so let me list down, the, we'll discuss the terms one by one, but first let me list down the terms which we are going to discuss in today's session. Point number one is thermal conductivity. So there are four basic terms. There are a lot of gate questions, both theory and numerical units, measurement units of these terms also have been asked in past gate papers multiple times, not single time. Not only in gate, even in other competitive exams like in ISRO, in CPWD, in DDA, questions have been asked on all these terms multiple times, not single time. So it is an important area from competitive exam point of view in architecture. So stay focused throughout the session. So the four terms we will be discussing in today's session include thermal quantities, that is number one. Number two is thermal resistivity. Number three, number three, the third term we'll be looking into is thermal transmittance. And the fourth term we'll be discussing is thermal resistance. Thermal resistance. Now, these uh, Terms, what are thermal quantities? What exactly is the meaning of this uh, topic of thermal quantities? Thermal quantities are a set of properties which govern the thermal performance of various building materials. Now, when we as architects design spaces, for example, say you're designing a building in hot and dry climate, what should be the motive of an architect? You have to select materials which can resist heat transfer through them because you're designing a building in such a climate where the temperature levels are very harsh. So, uh, in order to decide the material, to, in order to analyze the material from thermal point of view, it is important to understand all these thermal quantities. If in your future career, if you're planning to work towards the area of sustainable architecture, or even in planning, if you're moving towards sustainability, environmental planning, these areas of focus become very crucial because from sustainability point of view, designing green buildings point of view, understanding these basics is very crucial. So, 
And these are the four terms thermal quantities which are thermal terms the properties of materials which allow you to analyze the thermal performance if a material is conducting heat or not if it is resisting heat or not what should be the thermal conductivity of the material for a given uh, climate to understand these terms these, these become very crucial points of these properties are important for various construction material so uh, that's about the four points which we will be discussing in today's session as far as gate exam is considered you will get both theory questions and numerical questions from this topic theory questions generally are based on measurement units of various terms these are theoretical questions or you can also get questions on relation like as I told you they will give you two terms and ask you which is directly proportional which might be inversely proportional you need to understand the relation between various terms units and relations are generally asked in the theoretical part in numerical as you are aware you will get numericals like calculate the u value calculate the resistance of a wall or a window such numericals also have been asked in the gate paper even in 2022 numerical was asked on thermal quantities even in 2021 as I told you two numericals were asked on the topic of thermal uh, quantities itself so uh, let us begin with the discussion of the first term that is thermal conductivity so by the end of this session you will get full understanding on all these four terms how to calculate them what are the relations between them so that is what we are going to focus here so let me begin the discussion with the first term try to uh, try to maintain a running notes of all the points we are discussing even if you understand everything it is very crucial that you maintain a notes of all the points we are discussing number one is thermal conductivity Thermal conductivity is denoted by capital K. Now, what is thermal conductivity? Thermal conductivity is the property of a material to conduct heat. It defines the property of a material to conduct heat. In simple, so let me write down the points which I am mentioning over here. The first point which you need to understand is for thermal conductivity, it is the property of a material or the measure of property of a material of a material to conduct heat that's the definition of thermal conductivity. it's the property of a material to conduct heat now the ma term material here is very important or key why is it important to remember the term material i will tell you moving further so it's a property of a material to conduct heat that's point number one point number two materials of high thermal conductivity will allow for example if i give you two materials say i give you an example of copper and say clay clay brick if you compare these two materials copper as a material and earthen brick clay brick as a other material if i ask you which material will conduct heat easily through it obviously you all can guess the answer very easily that is copper copper is a metal and it can easily conduct heat through it so copper which conducts better heat will have a higher thermal conductivity so thermal conductivity is a property which will measure if a material will conduct heat easily or not if it is a good conductor of heat it will have a high thermal conductivity so thermal conductivity is a property of a material to conduct heat that's point number one point number two i'll just write it in short as k thermal conductivity k is higher for materials which conduct heat which conduct heat Thermal conductivity is higher for materials which conduct heat easily compared to materials of or low conductor materials which are not a conductor of heat, non conductors of heat compared to materials which do not conduct heat. So that is the second point. First point, thermal conductivity is property of a material to conduct heat. Second point, what it will be higher for materials of good conductors of heat. So if a material is good conductor of heat, it will have a high thermal conductivity. If a material is not a good conductor of heat, it will have a low thermal conductivity. That's second point. Third point, how do you measure it? It is measured in terms of Fourier's law of heat transfer. It is measured or let me write it in full thermal conductivity of a material. thermal conductivity of a material is measured in terms of is measured in terms of Fourier's law of heat conduction Fourier's law of heat 
conduction so these are the three points which you need to be which you need to understand in the first term thermal conductor property of a material to conduct heat it is higher for good thermal conductor to for good conductors of heat it is not a good uh, thermal conductivity is low for a material which is not a good conductor of heat that's the second point it is measured in terms of fourier's law of heat conduction now what is fourier's law of heat conduction it is not at all rocket science to understand fourier's law of heat conduction let me explain it to you in simple terms so that you get an idea how should you measure the thermal conductivity of a material? For example, if I ask you what is thermal conductivity of copper, it is a standard term for a material. As you can see here, the reason why I underlined the term material is, or I wrote over here also, thermal conductivity of a material. So remember, thermal conductivity is measured for a material. I cannot ask you what is the thermal conductivity of this window. I cannot ask you what is the thermal conductivity of the overall roof. It is because roof and window are not materials, they are building elements. Thermal conductivity is measured for a material. I can ask you, what is the thermal conductivity of concrete used in the roof? What is thermal conductivity of the glass used in the window? So these are materials. So thermal conductivity is always measured for a material. It is standard for a material. Thermal conductivity of copper it is a standard value. Thermal conductivity of concrete it is a standard value. Thermal conductivity is measured for a material. That's the first basic thing which you need to remember from thermal conductivity point of view. Now let us try to understand the measurement part of it. What is Fourier's law of heat conduction? Now listen carefully. If you try, if you consider, for example, let us consider a building component or a wall. For ease of understanding, let us consider a wall surface. If you have a wall, wall say this is a structure, a wall structure. If I ask you the amount of heat which enters through the wall per unit area, if I ask you how much heat is entering through this wall per unit area, heat flow per unit area, Q is heat per unit area. If I ask you what are the terms on which heat flow per unit area depends? It depends on three things. You can think yourself logically too. And if you take a guess, what are the terms on, if uh, thinking practical, if you have a wall and if I'm considering how much heat enters through the wall per unit area, if I ask you that question, it depends on three parameters. Number one, it depends on the material used in the wall. If the material is a good thermal conductor, it will allow more heat to transfer through it. Second thing, it will depend on the thickness. Obviously, the amount of heat which comes in through the wall will also depend on the thickness, if the thickness is less or high. And it finally also depends on the temperature difference. That is, how hot is it outside? Compared to the interior, if it is extremely hot outside, you will get a lot of heat. If the external temperature is not very high, you'll get less heat. So the amount of heat which flows in through the wall per unit area depends on these three things. It depends on the material, depends on the thickness, depends on the temperature difference across the structure. Now, what is the relation? Let us try to establish a relation between these terms. If I leave out material for a minute, we'll come to this. But let me first focus on thickness. Let me denote thickness by L. So what is the relation between heat flow per unit area, how much heat comes in through the wall per unit area, how is it related to thickness? Is it directly related or inversely? Let us try to understand. If you increase the thickness, what will happen to heat flow per unit area? If you are making a thick wall, heat flow per unit area will decrease. You will get less heat. So this is inversely proportional. So Q upon A is inversely proportional to thickness. That is the first point which you need to understand. Because if you increase the thickness, heat flow through that wall or through that structure will decrease. So Q upon A will decrease. So that's inversely proportional. Now let us try to establish a relation with delta T, the temperature difference. If you look into the second point temperature difference, what will happen to Q upon A? Heat. If you are increasing the temperature difference between the interior and the exterior, think logically and tell me what will happen to Q upon A if the temp if outside it is very hot compared to the interior. You will get more heat into the structure. So it is directly both are increasing. This increases, this also increases. So that is directly proportional. So Q upon A is directly proportional to delta T. Second point you're getting here is Q upon A is directly proportional to delta T. So from this first equation and the second equation, if you combine both of these points together, you will get Q upon A is proportional to delta T upon L. And you know in simple math, whenever you remove the proportionality symbol, you will get a proportionality constant. So if I remove this proportionality symbol, I'll get a proportionality constant k here. And this term k here is called as thermal conductivity. This is 
thermal conductivity is this material constant that's the reason i told you it is always constant for a given material so for this in this really so this is the q upon a is equal to k into delta d upon l this itself is called as fourier's law of heat conductivity now you need not by heart this formula try to understand the logic behind it that way you will easily remember the formula as well now numericals directly on this formula have not been asked but understanding this formula is important to understand the topics we are discussing moving further to understand u value you should know these basics of what is fourier's law of heat conduction so fourier's law of heat conduction is a relation which talks about conductive heat flow through a given structure so heat flow per unit area is directly proportional to delta t and inversely proportional to l and the material constant which you get over here is called as thermal conductivity in other words you can say heat flow per unit area q upon a is also directly proportional to k k also is in the numerator you, we already discussed that if k increases if thermal conductivity increases it will it is considered as a good conductor of heat so heat flow per unit area also will increase so that's a direct relation if k increases if the thermal conductivity of a material increases that is if you're considering good conductors like copper heat flow rate per unit area also will increase so it's a direct relation so k is always in the numerator that is the concept of Fourier's law of heat conduction. I hope this explanation on what is Fourier's law of heat conduction is clear. Now read the points. You can just go through the three points we discussed earlier. You will get better clarity. Thermal conductivity is the property of a material to conduct heat. It is higher for materials of high thermal conductivity versus the materials of low thermal conductivity. The, the thermal conductivity value is higher for good conductors of heat versus the, low, uh, the materials which do not conduct heat. That's second point. Third thing, it is measured in terms of Fourier's law of heat conduction. Fourier's four years law of heat conduction is nothing but Q upon A is equal to K into delta D upon L. Now let us try to analyze this particular formula quickly from gate point of view. What is it you have to remember? Let us try to understand the measurement units of it. So based on this formula itself, you can remember the measurement units very easily for thermal conductivity. So heat flow rate per unit area. What is Q upon A? So let me write down the formula over here on the top so that we can analyze it quickly in terms of the measurement units. Q upon A, the formula of Fourier's law of heat conduction goes this way. Q upon A is equal to K into delta T upon L. That's the formula for Fourier's for, for, for law of heat conduction. Now coming to the terms we are, we are looking into in this particular formula. The term Q upon A is heat flow per unit area. Heat flow rate, rate so this is heat flow rate per unit area heat flow rate per unit area is measured in terms of heat flow rate is measured in watts so what is rate of heat flow how much heat flows per unit time so rate of heat flow is measured in joules per second how much heat flows so this is rate of heat flow joule per second how many joules of heat energy flows per unit time per second that is called as rate of heat flow joule per second Joule per second is nothing but it is watt. Now we are talking about heat flow rate that is watts per unit area. So the measurement units overall becomes watt per square meter. Because rate of heat flow is measured in watts which is nothing but joule per second. Remember this point watts is always joule per second per unit area that is per square meter. So that's about Q upon A. Coming to delta T it is temperature difference which is measured in units of degree centigrade or kelvin can be degree centigrade or kelvin i'm not writing kelvin k because we will get confused with the term here so it can be either way it can be in degree centigrade or kelvin that is k then you have l l is nothing but thickness here which is measured in the standard si unit for thickness is meters it's nothing but in terms of measurement unit of length itself right so thickness is measured in m now if i substitute these measurement units you will get to know the measurement unit of k so let me write out, let me rewrite this formula. What will be the value of k? k will be equal to q upon a into l upon delta t. That will be the formula for k. Now let me substitute the measurement units to get the measurement unit of k. k is equal to, what is the measurement unit for q upon a? It is watt per square meter. So that's the measurement unit for q upon a into l is measured in, l over here on the numerator, that's measured in meter. Delta T is measured in degree centigrade upon degree centigrade. So meter and one meter over here in the denominator gets cancelled. The measurement unit which you will get for K from this will be watt per meter degree centigrade. Direct one mark question was asked in gate exam, ISRO exam and also in CPWD assistant architect requirement exam previously already on this point of measurement unit of K. So make a note of this point in chart. 
that you know the definition you know the concept behind it how to measure it in terms of Fourier's law of heat conduction and finally the measurement unit of thermal conductivity that is watt per meter degree centigrade that's the measurement unit for thermal conductivity and overall over all the points which we discussed most crucial thing which you have to remember is that the concept the thermal, the thermal quantity K that is thermal conductivity it is a material constant over everything you have to remember that K is a material constant what is a material constant it will be constant for a given material if I give you copper and ask you what is thermal conductivity it will be a standard value even if you measure it in India even if you measure it in Africa or somewhere else it will be a thermal material constant so that's about the concept of what is thermal conductivity of those four basic thermal quantities we have completed the first one that is thermal conductivity now let me take you through the second one the second um, uh, thermal quantity which we will be discussing is very simple and easy that is thermal resistivity Thermal resistivity is simply nothing. Let me write down the second point. Thermal resistivity. It is denoted by 1 by K. The definition itself is evident from this representation. It is nothing but the reciprocal of thermal conductivity. So write down the definition of it. Sometimes in gate examination, you will get questions where instead of giving you thermal conductivity, just to confuse you or to improve a level of complexity in the question, they will give you thermal resistivity. You should know thermal resistivity is nothing but the reciprocal of thermal conductivity. Even if they give you resistivity, you can easily find out the thermal conductivity value by reciprocating it. So what is thermal resistivity? Thermal resistivity of a material, th write down the definition, thermal resistivity of a material is the reciprocal of its, is the reciprocal of its thermal conductivity. That's the definition for thermal resistivity. What will be the measurement unit for it? It will just be the reciprocal of the measurement unit of thermal conductivity. We already saw in detail what is the measurement unit for thermal conductivity. It is watt per meter degree centigrade. So the measurement unit for resistivity will be the reciprocal of it. It will be meter degree centigrade per watt. You can also write this as once in gate exam. They also give this type of representation. It will be meter into degree centigrade into if you bring watt to the numerator it will be watt raised to the power of minus one it is one upon watt right so watt raised to the power of minus one you can also write it this way so if you get such representation do not get confused it is meter degree centigrade upon watt so if you bring that to the numerator you get into watt raised to the power of minus one once in gate exam they use this representation as well so that's about the measurement unit of thermal resistivity similarly for thermal conductivity what is the measurement unit for k which we already discussed what is the measurement unit it is watt per meter degree centigrade you can also write this as watt into meter reciprocal reciprocal of m raised to the minus 1 into degree centigrade raised to the minus 1 you can also write it like this so if you get such representations do not get confused with respect to measurement unit of a given term so that's about the second thermal quantity thermal resistivity what is common in thermal conductivity and resistivity both are material constants both are constant for a given material it is not constant for a given component like a wall roof or window but it is constant for a material so that's about the second thermal quantity let us now move on to the next the third thermal quantity and also the most you can say important in terms of numerical exam from exam point of view that is u value which is also called as thermal transmittance so let us discuss the next point thermal the third thermal quantity we are discussing in today's session is thermal transmittance which is denoted by u because of which thermal transmit if you if in the examination you come across terms like u value or l to a transmittance do not get confused all these are same thermal thermal transmittance is also called as u value it is also called as air to air transmittance it is also called as air to air transmittance so if you come across these terms do not get confused what is the reason behind it behind calling it as air to air transmittance i will also let you know that point moving further do not worry do not get confused with the 
terminology used over here let us try to understand the definition of thermal transmittance write down the definition we will discuss in detail after that thermal transmittance of a building component thermal transmittance of a building component in brackets you can write what is a building component like wall slab or window all these are building components door all these are building components you can measure u value for all these things thermal transmittance of a building component like wall slab or window is defined as the ratio between is defined as the ratio between heat flow rate is defined as the ratio between heat flow rate and or it is defined as you can instead of the ratio you can write it as it is defined as thermal transmittance of a building component is defined as the heat flow rate as the rate of heat flow you can write it as heat flow rate or rate of heat flow it is defined as the rate of heat flow per unit area per unit area per unit temperature difference per unit temperature difference across the structure across the building component that's the definition thermal transmittance of a building component like wall slab or window is defined as the rate of heat flow per unit area per unit temperature difference across the structure across the building component numerically speaking u value is defined as the ratio of heat flow per unit area per unit temperature difference across the structure q is equal u is equal to heat flow rate q per unit area per q upon a into delta t you can also rewrite this particular definition itself you can also write it as heat flow rate across a wall is equal to u value multiplied by area into delta t there have been a lot of numericals on this particular formula also in the gate exam now if you just try transfer the a into delta t to the other side it becomes u into a into delta t in fact if you get a doubt why are we learning about this why should you calculate the u value what what happiness you get by calculating the u value of a wall why should we measure it why is it so important it is important to understand how much heat you get through a wall for instance if i ask you i have designed this space and i want you to calculate how much heat i am getting through the south wall you all know how south wall is crucial from india's point of view from climate respons responsive design point of view if you provide even a single window on south wall you should do a complete analysis on what materials you are using into it if you are designing a green building right so if i ask you calculate the total amount of heat which you are getting from the south wall how can you calculate the heat flow rate conductive heat flow rate through the south wall it will be u value of that south wall multiplied by area of the south wall into delta t across the south wall so that's the use of u value the use of u value is to calculate q right how to calculate that u value we will learn moving further so u value into area into delta t will give you how much heat you will get through that building component be it a slab be it a wall or a window so in thermal analysis if you want to calculate the heat flow rate through the slab or south wall or a window this is how you do it u value into area into delta t that's the importance or significance of thermal transmittance let me tell you about the measurement the measurement unit for u value then we will move further and understand how exactly to calculate u so that you can find out the heat flow rate also through that wall so the measurement unit as far as measurement unit is considered for you q upon a into delta t q is measured in watts you already know that q is rate of heat flow which is measured in joule per second which is nothing but watts upon area is measured in square meter delta t is measured in degree centigrade so watt upon meter square degree centigrade that's the measurement unit for thermal transmittance remember this this also has been asked in exam in the past gate exam already watt upon meter square degree centigrade watt upon meter degree centigrade is the measurement unit for thermal conductivity of a material thermal transmittance is watt per meter square degree centigrade for a building component the basic difference between conductivity and transmittance is conductivity is measured for a material whereas transmittance it is measured for a building component 
let me tell you a fine line or what exactly is different if you look into the terms both are both sound very much similar thermal conductivity it tells you how well a material conducts heat thermal transmittance it tells you how well a building component will transmit heat through it both are very much similar conducting heat through a material transmitting heat through a wall the only difference is in terms of material and building component so let me give you an example to give you 100 percent clarity on this difference between u value and k so let us say for example you have a material which is copper and using the let's just hypothetical example using copper i make two walls say wall number one which is of say thickness 10 centimeters it is completely made of this material copper say there is a second wall of same material exactly same copper material this is wall number two which is say of thickness of 70 centimeters so i'm changing the thickness same material of different thing if i ask you what is the thermal conductivity of the material used here it will be some standard value k will be a standard value for the material copper the second wall also if i ask you what is the thermal conductivity of the material used in this wall it will be the same right both wall 1 and wall 2 have the exact same thermal conductivity k so just by looking into thermal conductivity you cannot tell how much heat you will get through that wall right to get a better understanding on how much heat flow rate happens through a wall you need to calculate the u value so for these these two walls wall 1 and wall 2 both will have same thermal conductivity both are made out of a material of same k so understanding only about k will not give you any information about its nature from thermal conduction point of view to understand about these two walls the difference between them or the difference in heat gain through these walls in fact in gate exam there was a numerical ones where they gave two walls and asked what is the difference in heat gain through these two walls if you compare them so in order to do such analysis you need to understand the u value because the u value will be different So that is where u value comes into picture u value and k are similar both will tell you how well heat flow is happening through a given structure but k is standard for a given material based on the thickness the u value will change for a given material so that's about the context into which thermal transmittance transmittance fits into now let us try to understand uh, the last term like i'm just discussing from this session point of view obviously in the full length lecture we will discuss everything in even more detail here i'm just giving you a brief so the fourth point for this from the session point of view let me very briefly tell you thermal resistance is the reciprocal of u value so let me very briefly write it over here because we'll go to the calculation of u value that is important so the fourth point as i told you you can just write down the definition thermal resistance which is defined as r value so let us write over here thermal resistance r value what is thermal resistance write down the definition thermal resistance of a building component is defined as the reciprocal of its u value so r is nothing but 1 upon u so what will be the measurement unit for r it will be the reciprocal of u values unit that is meter square degree centigrade per watt that will be the measurement unit for r value right i hope this is clear the fourth point let us look into the details of the calculation of u value now so firstly for that so, sorry so firstly let us look into the calculation of u value now we discussed two formula till now if you remember we discussed Fourier's law of heat conduction we use some other color so that it's clearly visible to you so we discussed Fourier's law of heat conduction which tells you q upon a is equal to k into delta t upon l and the second term we discussed was the measurement unit, the formula of U, which is heat flow rate per unit area per unit temperature difference across the structure. We discussed these two points, right? So, if you from these two, let us try to establish a relation between U value and K. So, if you want to find out what is the formula for U in terms of K and L, in terms of K and L, if I want a formula instead of QA and delta T, if I want in terms of K and L, what will it become? If I bring delta T to the other side, I'll get Q upon area into delta T is equal to K upon L. So Q upon A into delta T is nothing but U value. So U value will be 
k upon l so that's what we are getting here so what is k k is the thermal conductivity of the material used in the wall l is thickness of the wall so what are these two things here k is thermal conductivity of the material used in the wall and l here is the thickness of the wall technically speaking this itself so if i if i draw a diagram for you and show say there is a wall i gave you an example right so say this is a wall of 10 cm thickness so what will be the value of l in meters it will be 0.1 meter uh, everything you have to calculate in terms of SI units always so it is 0.1 meter 10 centimeters and if I say the thermal conductivity of this material is say 0.5 watt per meter degree centigrade and if I ask you what will be the u value of it it is nothing but k by l that's 0.5 upon 0.1 you will get 5 watt, 5 watt per meter square degree centigrade right but in practical terms do you think a complete wall is made out of one single material with one single thermal conductivity obviously no a wall is made out of bricks with plastering on it you will paint you might clad something over it so there are multiple layers in a wall so because of that difference generally if you have a single layer you don't call it as a, and also as it as you already told you thermal transmittance is measured air to air air to air it is measured right so if you're measuring only for one single layer technically speaking it is called as conductance of that layer right so k upon l in in practical terms from gate point of view generally there has been no question on conductance as such but you can remember this ratio k upon l of a layer because in a wall if you're talking about one k one material it will just be one layer in it right it is not the overall wall k, k upon l of a layer is called as conductance thermal conductance of that layer it is technically not called as u value because u value is measured air to air it is not measured for single layer so that is something which you can remember here however uh, u value and thermal conductance are similar but k is the only difference is conductance is simple terms in simple terms conductance is u value of one single layer if you're having only a single layer it is called as conductance in technical terms that's the only thing you can remember conductance and u value have a similar formula of k upon n now as i told you you might not have a single if you're having only single material then it is very fine you can it's very easy you can just write it as k upon l but in practical terms as i told you you will not have one single layer you might have multiple layers so let us now move on to one important area from gate point of view from which a lot of numericals have also been asked that is u value of a multi-layered wall so with all these points of understanding which we learned till now let us put to use and develop a concept to find out u value of a multi-layered wall What is u-value? Again, air-to-air -air transmittance. Let us say, for example, you have a wall of multiple layers. Say it has three layers. Say you have a wall with glass plastering on both sides and cladding on one side. Say the thickness of the first layer is L1. Thickness of the second layer is L2. Thickness of the third layer is L3. Thickness of the fourth layer is L4. And let us say, similar question was asked in gate 2021 in the question paper. They gave multi-layered wall. They gave you the L values, K values and all. They asked you to find out the U value from it. Direct question was asked uh, on this particular formula. Not only in 2021, multiple times it was asked. Say the thermal conductivity of these layers are K1 is the thermal conductivity of the material used in the first layer. Because thermal conductivity is always defined for a material. It is used. So if you are making a layer with one material, that is the value for it. So K1 is the thermal conductivity of the material used in the first layer. K2 is the thermal conductivity of the material used in the second layer. K3 is thermal conductivity of the material used in the third layer. K4 is the thermal conductivity of the material used in the fourth layer. So if this is the given information from this, let us try to find out what is U value. Now you can find out the U value of one thing, conductance. U value of a single layer is called as conductance. You can find out the conductance of the first layer, K upon L, K1 by L1. Conductance of the second layer, K2 by L2. But U value is not additive. Overall U value of the wall is not equal to U1 plus U2 plus U3 plus U4. You cannot find out the U values of each layer and add them. 
so uh, that will not give you the overall uh, u value right so u value of a layer is nothing but conductance so just by adding the conductance of the layers you will not get the overall u value it is not additive obviously you can ask me sir u1 u2 u3 all these are numbers why can't we add them absolutely you can add but the total value you will get that will not be the u value of the body just like densities if i ask you what is the overall population density of india can you add the population densities of all the 29 states or 28 states in the country if you add all the population densities will you get the overall population density absolutely no you so that is how not how you calculate densities are not additive in nature similarly u value also is not additive in nature but the reciprocal of it is additive in nature r values resistance is additive in nature overall resistance of the wall is equal to resistance of the first layer plus resistance of the second layer plus resistance of the third layer plus resistance of the fourth layer this is how it is resistance are additive in nature so what do i mean by why do why, why are resistance additive in nature to understand it in a better terms you can think in practical way if for example you are experiencing you have visited some uh, some say hill station you are going to nainital in winter how many clothes will you put on you will put on multiple layers you will put on a thermal inside you will put on a shirt over it you will put on a second shirt over it you will put on a jacket over it you might also put a sweater inside the jacket right so multiple layers why because the, you want to protect the heat you want to trap the heat inside your body in cold climate how can you trap the heat by offering a lot of resistance you want to stop that heat from flowing out how how do you do it by adding layers the total resistance i offer to the heat to escape from out will be resistance offered by the thermal plus resistance offered by the t-shirt plus resistance offered by the first shirt plus resistance offered by the second shirt plus resistance offered by the sweater plus resistance offered by the jacket so resistance is added you can add all the resistance that will give you overall resistance of a higher value similar concept here you can increase the resistance by adding the layers but not the u value u value is not additive but the reciprocal of u value is additive and also because we are calculating air to air you also will add something called as surface resistance of the outside and the inside surface surface resistance also is added the surface also will have some resistance now when you moving further uh, in the further sessions we will learn about lot more thermal quantities one of which is also solar gain factor when we learn about solar gain factor i will tell you will get a better understanding on what exactly is surface resistance how will a surface also offer some resistance we will learn about that in detail but for now remember surface resistance also is added for the external and for the internal surface to put it in simple terms these surface resistance values will depend on the texture color and properties of the external and the internal surface because those also will matter in terms of heat transfer rate of heat transfer so that is about the re overall resistance of the wall formula now you can also write this as resistance is nothing but 1 by u resistance by definition it is nothing but 1 by u we also know this we already know this so if i write this as 1 upon u value of the resistance 1 of resistance of the wall can be written as 1 upon u value of the overall wall is equal to 1 upon re resist 1 upon u value of the overall wall because resistance of the wall is 1 by u will be equal to surface resistance is also called as the reciprocal of surface conductance 1 upon surface conductance of the outside surface plus r1 is nothing but l by k we already discussed u1 is l1 k1 by l1 u of a layer is thermal conductivity of that layer upon thickness of the layer we already discussed this previously u is equal to k by l so u1 will be k1 by l1 this implies what will be the value for r1 it will be l1 by k1 because r1 is reciprocal of u value right so if i write this over here instead of r1 i can write l1 by k1 i can write this as resistance r1 is equal to l1 by k1 plus l2 by k2 so on i can add all the l by k's till l4 by k4 because there are four layers here plus one upon surface conductance of the inside surface surface resistance and surface conductance also are reciprocals to each other so that is something which you can remember now uh, that's the formula for overall u value of a multi layered wall in simple terms you can write this as one upon u value of a wall is equal to 
द रेसिप्रोकल ऑफ एक्सटर्नल आउटसाइड सर्फेस कंडक्टेंस वन अपॉन सर्फेस कंडक्टेंस ऑफ इफ यू मिस आउट दर्फेस कंडक्टेंस यूल नॉट गेट एयर टू एयर ट्रांसमिटेंस यूल जस्ट गेट दू वैल्यू ऑफ दॉल्ट विदाउट कंसिडरिंग द एयर टू एयर ट्रांसफर विदाउट कंसिडरिंग द एक्सटर्नल एंड इंटरनल सर्फेस प्रॉपर्टीज सो यू एड द सर्फेस कंडक्टेंस आइडियली टू गेट यू वैल्यू इफ द वैल्यू ऑफ सर्फेस कंडक्टेंस इज नॉट गिवन इन द क्वेश्चन यू कैन स्कीप इट यू कैन यू कैन स्टॉप कंसिडरिंग इट बट जनरली दैट डजेंट हैपन इन गेट एग्जाम वन परसेंट ऑफ द टाइम्स दर इज अ चांस दट दे डोट टॉक अबाउट सर्फेस conductance so you just ignore that part but the formula will be ideally the correct formula for u value is 1 upon surface conductance of the outside surface plus l1 by k1 plus so on for all the n layers there can be n layers in the wall n can be any value in this example i took four but once in gate exam there was a question there were where there were a total of five layers so there can be five layers also plus 1 upon surface conductance of the internal surface i so this is the overall formula for u value of a multi layered wall if a wall is composed of multiple layers this is how you calculate the u value of it so what are the pieces of information you require to find out u value of a wall you need to know the surface conductance of the inside and the outside surface firstly the reciprocals of that are directly added and in the components in the terms in between these two you need to know the thickness and conductivity of all the layers you need to know the thickness and thermal conductivity of each and every layer's material so that is how you find out the u value of wall for last point before we practice a question on this particular concept remember very important is that the formula which you have used over here that will give you the reciprocal one upon u value you'll not get the answer if you're using this formula you'll not get u value directly you'll get one upon u value because this itself is the formula derived from r so remember that many students do a mistake in this part where they do everything correctly and write the value and come as the answer but no the last step you need to reciprocal it that's where you generally go wrong that's where most of the students uh, so that's the difference way which is uh, uh, that's where you get this difference an edge over others who do not prepare with coaching and with dedication right so in the concept based approach in this learning methodology you will not only learn the concept you will also learn where are you prone to do mistakes practice is very important you will get homework sheets once you get practice those questions you are prone to do some mistakes you can discuss that with the faculty in the next class and you will get an idea you will improve on your mistakes that's very crucial in preparation for competitive exams like gate right that's how you can boost up your score so this is a probable error where you can have error which can happen in your solution so that's about the formula for u value let us practice a small question on this concept obviously this is not everything which you will need to learn uh is because this is a small session i tried to concise the information and give you in precise manner but in the actual study obviously we will need to take it slowly few terms at a time lot of things you need to also go into further more detail and learn the things that's how we will be doing in the full length classes last point for this particular session we will be doing is a practice question let us take a small practice question on the concept which we have learned till now so let me write down that question it's a pass gate question so let me write it over here for you it's a two marks numerical which was asked in the year 2014 during the course of explanation i already told you a lot of theory questions also have been asked on measurement units and relations between various terms let us look into this practice question a brick wall the question was it's a small question you can make a note a brick wall 19 cm thick has a thermal conductivity of has a thermal conductivity of 0.811 watt per meter degree centigrade that's the measurement unit the outside and inside surface conductances of the wall are the outside and inside surface conductances of the wall r 16 watt per meter square degree centigrade and 8 watt per meter square degree centigrade respectively the u value of the wall in watt per meter square degree centigrade is dash the u value of the wall in watt per meter square degree centigrade is dash so let us try to solve this numerical so firstly 
the way you need to go about numericals is list down the given values read the question list down the given values first from that you'll get an idea what is the given information what is to be calculated from that you will get an idea what is the formula to be used so let us do that let us read the question the thickness of the wall is given as 19 cm. so there's a brick wall the thickness of which is given as 19 centimeters that's the first thing and the thermal conductivity also is given the value of k for the brick is also given as 0 0.811 watt per meters degree centigrade so you if you convert this thickness l into meters you will get 0 0.19 meter l and k are given for the brick wall there's only one layer from the given information there's no plastering or there's nothing else given but there are outside and inside surface conductances outside surface conductance and inside surface conductance are given as 16 and 8 respectively and we need to find out the u value so what is the u value formula when surface conductance also is given what is that formula where we use surface conductance one upon u value because u value you should not ignore the surface properties you don't just calculate it for the layer if i ask you what is conductance of this wall or if i ask you what is conductance of this layer it will be k by l directly but if i want to do the u value you it will be one upon u is equal to one upon surface conductance of the outside surface plus l by k of all the layers given there's only one layer so you'll get only l1 by k1 plus 1 upon surface conductance of the inside surface so this will be 1 upon surface conductance of the outside surface i think is given as 8 no 16 it is 1 upon 16 plus l by k l is 0 0.19 this is also important this is where all, many students also go wrong in units focus specially on the measurement units so 0 0.19 divided by 0 0.811 that's the k1 value plus 1 upon surface conductance of the inside surface 1 upon 8 you can simplify this you can use your calculators for this purpose uh, let me find out this value 1 upon 16 that value is 0 0.0625 0 0.0625 plus this value comes out to be 0 0.2343 you can use your calculators uh, to find out 1 upon 8 will be 0 0.125 these are the values so adding these you will get 0 0.4218 is this the final answer absolutely no this is 1 by u they are asking us the u value so finally u value of this wall will be equal to u value will be equal to 1 upon 0 0.4218 so find out the reciprocal of this you should get 2.37 measurement unit will be watt per meter square degree centigrade and I, so this is point 2.37 is the answer for this question. 2.37 watt per meter square degree centigrade. That's the unit in which they are asking. So this is how you solve the question. So remember the formula for U value of a multi-layered wall. Uh, when multiple layers or hot surface conductance are given, this is how you find out the U value. Now, why did we take so much of pain to find out the U value of this particular wall? As I already told you, the practical application of it. Why do architects find out the U value of a building component? It is to use this particular formula. It is to put it into this formula, this one over here, in this formula, you, you got the U value from the analysis of the layers, the composition, the thickness, the outside and inside surface conductance, using all these inputs, you will get the U value of a wall. Once you get the U value of the wall, you put it into uh, in this formula, U into area of the wall, you can find out length into breadth of the wall and write down the area. Temperature difference, you can measure inside temperature, outside temperature. So substitute these three, U into A into delta D. You will get how much heat you will get from the wall. For example, if I say U value of a given wall is 2 watt per meter square degree. Let us take an example. Such question also was asked in gate exam previously. If I say U value of a wall is 2 watt per meter square degree centigrade. Generally, you write it as DGC. But you can, some books also mention it as degree centigrade. The difference between these two is degree centigrade is used to measure a temperature. If I ask you what is your body temperature? It will be 37 degrees centigrade. You write it like this. If I ask you what is the temperature difference between inside and outside, you will write it like this 10 degrees centigrade DEGC. So that's a small uh, point which you can remember, but this representation not very important from exam point of view, gate point of view, because people without knowing this difference, they interchangeably use it. But that's the technical difference how you distinguish between measuring a temperature and difference between two points of temperature. So U value, for example, this is not past gate question, just as an example. So U value is 2 watt per meter square degree centigrade. Say area of that wall is 50 square meter. And say the temperature across that wall is say 10 degree centigrade. And if I ask you how much heat are you getting through this wall, heat flow rate through that wall will be 2 watt per meter square degree centigrade 
u into area is 50 square meter delta t is 10 degree centigrade right degc so if you observe square meter square meter degree centigrade these get cancelled so 2 into 50 into 10 you will get this as 1000 to 50 into 2 is 100 100 into 10 you will get 1000 so this will be 1000 watts this will be the rate of heat gain through the wall so uh, that's how you can calculate the heat flow rate through a given wall if you know the u value of it i hope uh, you have understood the concept of u value the meaning of k thermal conductivity resistivity u value and resistance uh, and also how gate questions are asked from numerical and theoretical point of view from this uh, so we will move further in the further sessions we will discuss about the remaining thermal quantities and also these how to apply them the application of it and also will solve a lot of previous gate questions also in the class so that's all for this session